So we stopped Hello Solari 2001. And then the next time they played, it was 2003, I think. And Mikey was gone and George was playing. And they had this crazy thing. I got in line. I remember getting in line crazy early and Jordan made fun of me. Um, but we had really, really close seats and we were in the venue very, very early. And they had this, this like hallway, outdoor like hallway thing. The Palo Solari is such an interesting venue and it's designed by an architect. You know, it's really meant to be this creative space. And you could see the band like loading in and the band walking down this ramp kind of before the show even started <clears throat> and i remember when george walked down the ramp there was a huge cheering and applause and everyone clapping for him and this was still at the time where people were just really grateful to him for being there at all you know because i think we knew if he wasn't there where would where would we be what would we be doing and um <laughs> that time that tide turned a little, but um, it was a really cool moment. And it was cool to be able to see them coming in because usually that's all backstage and it's so hidden and you don't get to have that view of the band. Yeah, that venue was so or organic is the word that comes to mind. And I think it was, it was the, the shows in 2001 where the dog just ran on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was like in the middle of, wasn't like in the middle of C Brown, but I think at some point during the show. I remember oh, uh, yeah. I don't think they played C Brown that night. I don't remember C Brown <laughs> from that show. <laughs> yeah, no, just, just joking about that, but that would, that would be funny. Panic should do that every time they play C Brown, just have a, like a little puppy. Run Bring a dog. Stage. Yep, uh, team dog. Just up with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you, uh, you, were, you went to Power Solari too. You were there. Were you there in the 90s? Yeah. Was it? Nin 97 was the only time I went. Um, and it was, yeah. yeah, it was definitely memorable. Um, the whole thing, like, uh, we got there pretty early. I was uh, traveling with one other guy. Um, and yeah, we got there early in the afternoon. It was really kind of chill. I remember driving down, I think it was Cerritos Boulevard or something, which is one of the main arteries of santa fe and you know, it just goes and um i think that's what it's called and then um yeah it was just so yeah it was just so funny because i remember you know again no internet no way to check out it was you know on the satellite where it's you know and so all of a sudden we see this little sign it's like you know palo solar amphitheater or whatever whatever you know <laughs> yeah. it says with some like blue you know touristy yeah. kind of sign and like yeah it just left and like you just take a left and there it is it's like right. it, it, you drove right through it and then i remember like the parking lot was just very like dirt and they had like yeah. what looked like like fences like you'd see it at it um it was maybe a school like, it was like a deaf school right it's a, right it has that whole vibe and like because the theater itself to me reminded me of like one of those camp amphitheaters like at a summer day camp or something it was a little right. bigger, obviously, but it was that kind of not much, but it was that vibe and like, yep. yeah, it was it was yeah. um, it was really good. And like, even if the shows like I always usually just kind of always kind of broke uh, and always did show solo. Usually, even if I went with people, I'd be like, all right, see you at drums or see you at set break, you know, just I just like doing that. And so, um, yeah, and I like to. Uh, I don't know. I like to usually kind of just be on the outside. So many times I'm outside of the venue and the gates a lot. Not like, you know, rowing down hard necessarily, but sometimes, but mostly <laughs> to just kind of just like, I don't know, like just kind of chill out and just watch the whole thing unfold. Like, I, like I just kind of dig that, you know? Um, and so yeah. I remember being at Palo Solari like during vacation or something. Like it was during, yeah, it was like machine bar stools, right? Machine bar stools ain't no use vacation. And like, people were completely, it was a tribal thing happening. It was just completely not, you know, it, w it was something that I hadn't really experienced at, at the Panic shows a at that level. Like it was just completely, I don't know. Like everybody was almost just, I don't know. It was a weird kind of 
one of those things where everyone was just in in unison like this kind of right. it was really cool and like you know would that have happened it, it, phillips probably not you know <laughs> you know so yeah. like it, it's yeah. just so i'm always i think it's funny because now when i think of some of these stories i do think of them in a different pov now that you know this this the venue llama project is 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 here and it's like yeah the the venues make such an impact in the whole experience because it just kind of it's yeah you could the people act differently the people from the 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 region might be different you know and all of these different elements kind of come together in this one meeting place the venue you know and so um i don't know i i, I just see that yeah. more and more you know yeah, that's, yeah. yeah I, I hear what you're saying i feel like for me it's like yeah like you're saying when you're younger you experience that and you, and you feel it and it has these different effects on you and like the older that i've gotten i've just kind of just thought about it more and have broken it down in, in my mind and like thinking about like why it did, why I do feel different in different venues or where I did back in the day and you know looking back at a place like Palace of Larry it just seems like there was there was definitely just a lot of intention I mean like we, Lisa you were saying Palace of Larry he yeah was, was this famous architect and just put all this thought into the venue and I remember just remember the seats just even how the seats you kind of feel like you're like looking down on the stage and just how the, the stand just kind of envelop the stage and and like the like the stage is on the same level like as the first row of the seats. So you just kinda of had this there was this feeling there of, of interconnected connectedness. I think that they there just was a lot of forethought into that and and that's you know, just getting like why we love these bands. There's already that feeling of just being part of it and just having an influence on the show and especially venues like that where they're just it just felt to me that there was just like no barrier between the band and the fans it was like this one big like aspen tree kind of kind of kind of thing <laughs>